One of the most interesting things I've known, I, when, when I was reporting on for my, for my book, American Higher Education in Crisis, you know, frankly, one of the reasons I wrote the book in the first place was I was really struck by the fact that at the time, in you know, the early 2013 you know, or so, people were talking a lot about disruption in higher education, but people were, weren't really talking about sort of, I, I guess for want of a better term, the have and have not populations in higher education, the fact that higher education was becoming more lower income, um, I, I called it browner in the book, but basically more students of color, more students, you know, more black students, more Hispanic students, more Am American Indian students. Uh, I mean, that's obviously, that, was, that population is going to continue to become an adult population as they get older. Um, those same students that are being poorly served by higher education now, the, you know, we, our graduation rates for uh, minority students and low-income in, in low students are much worse than they are for majority students, white majority students. Well, guess what? That, that, that problem doesn't go away you know, when we're done with high, when, when, the, when students don't graduate college. 20 years later, those students are still, those, those former students, now adults, now still perhaps with some student debt, but no degree, are still our population out there. And so I think as we think about the adult student population, we have to kind of recognize that it's who, who, who how that population, what that population looks like and what its needs are. I mean, frankly, this is not an issue just for adults, but it's for everybody, but it needs to be an issue for adults too. I mean, we have a giant um, food insecurity problem in our country. So many, I mean, I, a bunch of, I went to visit Bunker Hill Community College, I was just blown away by the food bank and the food programs that they have there for their students. Students can come in, not, and then they can not only come in there and sign up for um, SNAP and for other kinds of, you know, federal um, food programs, but they can walk in and make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich right there on the side, nobody asks a question. They can go to the back and they've converted a bunch of these file cabinets into just pantries with canned goods and things. And people walk in and they take what they need. And they're not doing this because they don't want to go to the grocery store. They're doing this because they're hungry. And that's a huge problem. I mean, Sarah Goldrick Robb and others have been doc documenting this problem at American campuses. And it's a problem for 18-year-olds and it's a problem for 28-year-olds as well. I mean, it's, a, it's across the board. And I mean, I, don't, I guess higher ed isn't necessarily ready to be a social service agency in addition to being an educational organization, but it, that's becoming one of the roles. And it, you know, it's, a, it's a responsibility that these institutions are gonna unfortunately have to ha take on you know, as they think about their entire student population, their 18-year-olds and their older students.